15 years ago, on this day, one of the best selling and loved games of all time was released. And until recently, it was the best in the franchise. Until being overtaken. And that game was. For strapping folks, because today, we've got a big video. And we're going to be looking back at how this game impacted Nintendo, how it appealed to so many people, and why so many of them love it, and how it refused it to die more so than Minecraft and GTA 5. Also, it would be much appreciated if you would like and subscribe, and let me know how you feel about these big videos. Obviously it's not big big, like it's not like an hour, some people do, but I'm not as than an hour, not just yet. Maybe if there's a topic to talk about, but enough about that, let's get into this. The Mario Kart series has always been relatively successful on most of Nintendo's consoles, typically performing the best than most of the other games. But when they decided to release the fifth game in the series, Mario Kart DS, the popularity skyrocketed. This could be due to many different reasons, but probably the main one is how successful the DS was with the casual audience, which is games like Brain Age, etc. So, when it was time for Nintendo to make another home console, they decided to go all in to appeal to the casual audience by <sighs> Design the console like a TV, controls designed like a TV remote, use motion controls, made many family party games, made more simple games, made games that implemented the motion controls, you get the picture. This made it really easy and accessible for anyone of any age to just pick up a controller and start playing, whether it's someone fresh out the womb, Run test store. This is mainly why games like Wii Sports were so successful. However, even though games had simpler controls and concepts, didn't mean Nintendo wants to leave their hardcore audience behind and not take them into consideration when the games being developed. And that's where Mario Kart Wii comes in. Originally called Mario Kart X, X referring to the word extreme, because Nintendo's cool like that, was announced and revealed at E3 2007 alongside a custom Wii wheel that makes its debut with Mario Kart for Wii. Yeah, apparently they went through 30 prototypes for a wheel. A wheel. But this round piece of plastic has a purpose, as it was made to simulate a steam wheel. So it feels like you're really driving! Oh my god, thank you Nintendo, thank you! And to make motion controls feel more to it justified. Even though you can just use the Wii remote on its own if you want. Actually, this might be the highest number of controls that you can use for a Mario Kart game. I mean, you have the iconic Wii remote and Wii Wheel, Wii remote, Wii remote and Nunchuck, classic controller and GameCube controller, to wait some more experienced players and casual ones. And on April 10th, 2008, in Japan, the game was released. Then released in Europe on April 11th, and later in North America on April 27th. Look, there's a lot of countries in the world, I know, and as of today, it has sold 37 million copies. So what made this game so special compared to the other Mario Kart games? Well, I think it's because they pushed the boat out a bit for this one. Sort of. As they develop many new things, like now on tracks, if there's a ramp, you can trick off them when you land to get a speed boost. But there are some things they did worse, like changing battle mode to a war instead of, you know, actual battle. They also had new mechanics that would become permanent after this game, like bikes. Although well, bikes in this game function very differently to later interpretations. Like, you can pop a wheelie on this one, but it can give you a, a bit of a speed boost. But, if you're playing this game and someone chooses a car and you choose a bike, the person with the bike's probably going to win. And for one time only, just to appeal to the casual audience, just a tiny, inty winty bit more. They added also drifting. So now you don't have to do it yourself! But manual is just better. You know, just, just, just stick with manual. However, though, drifting has changed. Now, this was the first Mario Kart I played, so it's not really a difference to me. But when people go from the old games to this, there is a big difference. So, in the old Mario Kart, to drift, you have to wiggle the joystick left to right. I think that's how it works. To build up your mini turbo boost. And then you just let go and it boosts. But, the 
reason they changed this is something that is so disgusting that I felt sick looking at. Snaking. Now snaking was in other Mario Kart games but it was most common and broken in DS. It was so broken on straightaways people would, instead of driving straight, just drift. And they would go faster. It, it's sick. I, not in a good way. It's physically sick and it needs to get put down. What a sick world we live in. Someone should put them in jail. Alright, onto the characters. Oh. oh no. Now I don't hate this roster. I grew up with it. However, there were characters that should have come back and new ones that should have been added. Instead of having, you know, four children. For example, where's Petey Piranha? He's only been in Mario Kart Double Dash and would have made perfect sense for this game considering the weight classes. So then that. Alright. Instead of having Rosalina be there like. He's a heavyweight, and since he didn't appear here, he has never been seen again. Not counting at all. Then there were also other characters they could have added, and they almost did until they were scrapped. And one of them is Hammer Row. I reckon that would have been cool. However, the selection we got isn't bad by any means. As we got fan favourites like Rosalina now, the god Funky Kong, and who could forget? Me. They bumped me in Mario Kart. If you had told me this when I was a kid, I was kid you not, would have shit my little toddler pants. But overall this selection kind of feels a bit copy and pasted, and they got lazy and just paired up models together, like Baby Peach and Baby Daisy because you can't have one without the other, Cooper and Dry Browns because you can't have one without the other, Bowser and Dry Bowser because you can't have one without a fucking other. Now one of the main reasons I think this game is so special to so many people, besides the nostalgia, is the track selection. There are so many bangers, even some of the retro ones are bangers, like to name a few. <sighs> Mushroom Gorge, Toad's Factory, DK Summit, Coconut Mall, Cooper Cape, Maple Treeway, Moonview Highway, Delphina Square, Waluigi Stadium, Peach Gardens and DK Mountain, to name a few. I don't know what to say, they are just well designed tracks, some of their simple easy experiences, some not so much. Even the battle causes bang. Shame I can't say for the battle mode. Actually, while we're on the topic, let's talk about battle modes. So there were only two modes, OG Balloon Battle and Coin Runners, basically the equivalent to Shifey from DS, which is fine. It's not really the modes themselves, but why do we have to be on a team? Like, what if I'm doing well on the team and lets me down? And why can't we have unlimited time? Like, what is this? And also, when you kill someone on Balloon Battle, why do I respawn? I, even I'm saying this. Like, why, why, why do you respawn? It defeats the whole purpose. It makes the balloons feel worthless. Okay, I'm gonna freestyle this. Uh, I don't have a script for this part because, uh, well, when I'm reading this out, uh, the time for the video isn't actually as long as like some of the other ones I made. So I'm just gonna just talk about this. Uh, items. So. The new items they added, they're okay. Uh, you've got the Mega Mushroom, which is basically just a star. I mean, for once, I think Tor did this better, where it's unlimited until they like, hit someone. I reckon that was cool. Uh, then you had the Thunder Clouds, I think, Lightning Cloud, which is a cool concept. Don't get me wrong, it's a, a cloud that can, well, an item that can damage you unless you pass it off but when you get it you have to use it straight away you can't like choose which is annoying and then you have to power the power is basically just the worst version of lightning which is just annoying because you lose your items unless you well you lose your items but if you shake the wing root or I think I don't know like, what you do for the controller uh, if you do that then it doesn't spin you out as much, but you lose your items, so it just defeats the whole purpose of the item. And it's just very stupid. But, since we're on items, the item balancing it ain't good, Chief.
there's been times where I've been hit by like four blue shells in one race. It's just crazy. Now I think that's everything. I don't think I'm missing anything important. Online. I'm going to talk about internet. Yeah, so online was implemented in Mario Kart DS for the first time, but the way is where it developed a cult following. <clears throat> Nintendo even made online tournaments where you could do missions that were cut from the actual game, and boss fights, like on DS. Now I think online did so well because of the ranking system. Like, everyone was competing with each other to get the ranks up. That's why all they drove was bikes now. But there was something I didn't mention, something that was so prominent in this instalment, made online so competitive and broke. Ultra Shortcuts These have been in other Mario Kart games like Mario Kart 64, but in this game they are broke like completely. You can complete Grumble Volcano by driving around a rock. A rock. Now all of this combined creates a community that refused to let this game die. No seriously, Nintendo shut down the online servers and two people created a whole new online server to keep this game going. They even made custom tracks to carry those items like that's insane. Now I think I speak for a lot of people who have played this game, especially when it first came out and say this is probably one of the best games ever made and deserves to be one of the best selling games of all time for many reasons i've explained but probably the main one is memories now yes you could argue that this could apply to any game like minecraft or gta when they first released but with this game it's special most people would have just gave up and moved on to the next game, which some people did, but some people decided to stay and make a community with all these events and shows just so they could relive their childhood and the game that they love. And I respect that. I've had so many good memories with this game and that's why I think that this will always stay in my heart and be my favourite game of all time.